Welcome to Let's Talk Possibility, episode 66 on the 11th of March 2013. And in today's show, we are talking about the exciting world of mentoring and how this particular process can help develop individuals young and old. Join me in studios. I discuss with Marley Motiba, the founder of Guiding Africa's Next Generation, and Talana Simpson, founder of Inner Coaching. Enjoy the show. I love the youth and development of human capital. Um, and within our country, I think there's never been really a more urgent time for the development of, of human capital as such. Um, you look at South Africa and we're part of BRICS, which is very exciting from a developed nation or developing nation perspective. We've successfully, sorry. Sorry, but people don't know what BRICS is. Oh, BRICS, that's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So, awesome powerhouses have got together. Indeed. And uh, we're part of that, which is very exciting. You know, so that's a really good step in the right direction. We've hosted multiple international events, whether it's um, conferences or where we've got, you know, sporting events coming in. We've really been able to show our weight on Indeed. the international stage. But, but we battle, I think, on, on some fundamentals, and education is one of them, in my opinion. And uh, that is why it's exciting to have Mali in studio. Welcome to you. Thank you very much for having me, Jonathan. You're uh, grown up, born and bred in Johannesburg, but through studied through. in Cape Town. No, incorrect, actually. I studied in Johannesburg. Did you study? Mm, my parents refused to let me go to Cape Town. Um, I okay. was the, I'm the eldest of three boys, so they were kind of nervous about letting me leave the coop. <laughs> uh, you know, once someone gets their freedom, there's a bit of a worry that they might exploit that a bit too much. So they kept an eye on me, and I studied in Johannesburg. I was going to rip you off there. I had it in your profile. That you, f that you went and studied in Cape Town. So I'm glad you saw the light. Indeed. And your parents saw the light earlier. But as soon as I graduated, packed the car and then moved to Cape Town. Okay. That's why you're confused. Ah. <laughs> so my, my misreading. But, but I think where, um, what, what, what is, I think, really exciting for me is mm -hmm. that you're founder of, of an organization, an NGO called Indeed. Gang. Yes, I am. Tell Indeed. us a bit more about Gang, uh, Guiding Africa's Next Generation, which Indeed. strikes home for me, really mm -hmm. does, mm -hmm. as an acronym. It's a long or short version. I've got two versions. Um, let's start with the short. We can always get into the longer version a bit later. <laughs> well, I mean, for me, it was a very per it's a very personal thing. Uh, my grandmother was a teacher, and I used to go with her at, uh, from a very young age to, during my school holidays um, with her to class and interact with the kids and whatnot. But then I got to a stage in my life where I was done with school, and the next level was necessary, and I was confused. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I had the good fortune of being at a really, really good school. Uh, so then I thought, you know, I got thinking about other people in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I started like, looking, meeting other people, expanding my horizons and realizing that the problem is deeper, than, much deeper than I'd realized at the time. Then I was lucky to be invited to be part of a young leaders program while living in Cape Town. One of the um, de deliverables was a leadership project. And that's when Gang was born because it was passionate, something I was burning within me for a very, very long time. And, you know, I was being judged on it almost. So that's how Gang started, and then I just sent out an email to everyone in my Facebook, and I said, this is what I'm going to do, who's with me? Uh, a lot of no's, one yes. That's, <laughs> that's all you all need, you need. one you yes, need. and that was when Gang was born. Well, at least you know which people are willing to take it further, which Indeed. is exciting. Yes, yes. So there's a mentoring part to Gang. Yes. That's it's the main part of it. Main part of it. We'll get to definitions of mentoring just now, mm -hmm. but I just want to bring in Talana's element, because... She is passionate about coaching. I think mentoring is an element of what she does. But, but she's got her own organization, Inner Coaching. Yes. And, and tell us a bit more about your passion and how you got involved there, Talana. Oh, I actually fell into coaching by accident. I was, I was in, in much more involved with you training. You tripped and fell. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never heard of coaching. Yeah. It wasn't it's such a new profession. Mm. I didn't know there was this thing called coaching. And I was um, applied for a job as a, for the, as a trainer. When I got the job, they said, you're not actually going to be a trainer, you're going to be a coach. And they opened this whole new world to me of what coaching was. It was so new, especially in South Africa. It was, yeah. you know, this had evolved. This was um, 10, 12 years ago. It had evolved much more in Australia and, and um, America at that time. So, yes, I, I'm, I got the job, loved it. It just, you know, really excited me. It was just so much a whole new world of psychology because I've got a background in psychology mm -hmm. and this is very much what they call the genital side of psychology. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, I then actually went and helped someone start a bicycle business and then realized how much I enjoyed coaching. So I left that, studied further in a particular style of coaching called meta-coaching and then 
because you couldn't get jobs in when I qualified. You know, it was so new in the country that I yeah. had to start my own business. You must create everything from scratch. And I never thought I would own my own business, but I've never <laughs> looked back. I've absolutely loved it, and it's been 10 years now coaching. All right, so it's not coaching. such a young profession. Anymore. Maybe maybe in South Africa, yeah, anymore. It, it's matured a lot in the, yeah. in the last 10 years, I can tell you that. It's, um, okay. So, so I have a couple. Sorry, you if to I say may, something? I mean, I was doing, like I mentioned, I was in that lead, young leaders program, and I had part of the program was that you were given a life coach, and it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful experience. I mean, I can attest to that. It's, it's. I quit my job, I packed my car, moved up to Joburg, and I started the NGO. You know, it made me realize exactly who I was and what I needed to do to be happy, mm. and that's that is the ultimate goal. We all live in the pursuit of happiness. Okay. Mm. Good. Good job. Nice. So, so I've got uh, in studio then. Passionate mentor, passionate coach. But the, the definitions, I looked them up, and I must be honest, I couldn't get any one concrete definition. So I'm willing to bet that there's a bit of confusion out there. Mm. So, so Molly, your definition of a mentor on the mentoring process, um, in brief, in short, what, uh, what do you think? Okay, how would good you describe question. It? What we do basically is that I believe currently, and I'm, I could be wrong, that the education system doesn't prepare people properly for life, especially given that life has changed so dramatically over, um, you know, what is it, 2,000 years or whatever, and yet the education system remains the same. Mm -hmm. So there, I think there are a lot of things that kids are not learning, as well as, you know, the what do I want to be when I grow up question. Who better then to help you answer that question than someone who's doing something that you think you might enjoy? Yeah. I can show you exactly what you're in for if you follow this, and, you know, and hopefully the process leads on so that once you do make a choice, you are happy, you don't end up failing or getting kicked out of a bursary or something because that is the reality. Yeah. People tick accounting because everyone wants to be an accountant, it's the buzzword or whatever, <laughs> CA, CA, mm -hmm. and then they hate it and they get one chance. So let's make sure they use that one chance effectively. Okay, so, so there's, in there's short, a strong guidance element there. That's the name of the tin, Guiding Africa's Next Generation. All right, yes. great. And then I, when I looked at the coaching again, Talana, also not particularly clear. No. And uh, before the show, you gave us a bit of insight into that. But your definition of, of, of coaching, or a uh, coach so as well, not, uh, not throwing a rugby ball and making sure that they can pass <laughs> correctly. <laughs> no, so I think because coaching is becoming a profession now and it's growing so much, it's becoming more and more distinct. So our, our map of coaching up until you know, the last couple of years has been sports coaches. You know, so you think of it, I would say more sports coach is a lot about the technical skill and a lot of teaching and, you know, and that kind of development. So, so for me, the, the distinctions that we make between these, I call them helping modalities, is um, just as Marley said, mentoring is about guidance. Mm -hmm. Someone who's had experience that almost takes you under their wing and shares their, their specific experience with you, yeah. and then you get to decide what you're going to do with that knowledge. A consultant is more someone who gives you advice. They tell you how to do it, what to do, when to do it. Doctors, lawyers, yeah. you know, th 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 those people play that role. Um, coaching is more what we call facilitation. Professional coaching is a professional coach is someone who facilitates you to access your resources and take your performance to the next level. Okay. So they don't tell you how to do it or what to do it or why you should do it. <coughs> they just purely facilitate. They throw you in the deep end. And ho no, they hold the space and they ask you... Hold your head underwater. Questions. <laughs> 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 Not really. I don't no. want to throw that analogy. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they hold the space for you to do the exploration you need to do to find your answers. And they are able to, to ask the questions to help you unlock those answers and then feed back, mirror back to you what mm. you've said. Because often we don't hear what we said until someone says it back to us or shows us what, what, what we, you know, the patterns that we keep talking about. You know, okay. So, so that to me is what professional coaching is about is purely facilitation we're not we don't give advice we don't give guidance because if we do then we're not coaching yeah. i step into so i would mentor sometimes i mentor actual coaches i also mentor people around health challenges um, that's one of the, the areas because i've had some you know experiences with my health so then that's when i step out of coaching into mentoring and then usually with that guidance a coach then would be a, you know, a good coach would know that where the, the boundaries are and be able to step back into coaching and say, okay, with that information now, what you, works for you? Yeah. What do you want to do? What's your answers? What's, what's you know, your next step? Okay. So in terms of the process then of introducing mentoring or the mentoring process and coaching, gang deals with secondary and tertiary learners. That's correct. Coaching, I imagine, would deal with your, uh, certainly once you're into a profession. Um, 
think you've got to be learning on the spot, have that experience within the workplace. It uh, definitely has, has a lot of um, value there, but uh, I know people who specialize in coaching children. Okay. So it's, it's So they not both really cover it's across the spectrum. It's more looking at what is the, ages, does that is. person want to find their own answers to what's going on, or they do they not have enough resources, as you say, enough knowledge that they need training? And that's another modality where you're teaching and passing information, or do they need guidance from a, from a mentor? So, so I, I think also something like like um, mentoring with the with the guidance is maybe a bit more long term, whereas coaching is maybe more short term interventions. Okay. Do you mean you you come help someone with with a specific problem, process, dream, outcome. Mm -hmm. It's not a long-term, you know, process. Sure. I understand that. Okay. Um, now, I've got you. I want to find out a little bit more about gang. Mm. You've given us how it started yes. in Cape Town yes. with an email yes. and a social Facebook media interaction. Yes. And one yes. And that's one it. Yes. And that's it. <laughs> but... Um, the mentoring process is not, it's, it's not simple. I mean, it's not at all. you're relying on volunteers. Indeed. Indeed. And you're dealing with potentially fragile individuals. I mean, kids, they're young, they're impressionable. Indeed, yes, so correct. Tell us the process of ensuring that these kids are paired correctly. I, is, I, know, I know that's what you do because mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting involved in that process myself. <laughs> sure. But, but the process you do to make sure that these kids get the best. The best in terms of mentors or the best in terms of gang offering? I think a gang offering because okay. you may get a mentor and a, a mentee fit that is not ideal. Indeed, yes. Um, and that's unfortunate. But I think really what gang, in, in my eyes, mm -hmm. is looking to do is to really uplift kids, give them an opportunity to make informed decisions, empower them. Sure, 100%. Well, our work covers three pillars. And the first being personal development, the second being career guidance, and the last being community development. So okay. with that framework in mind, what we do is we do pair mentees up with mentors who are indeed volunteers, as you mentioned. But we also host um, workshops. Okay. So for example, this weekend we had a, a motivational speaker come in and unlock and teach the children the power and their potential for success. Uh, so we, we touch on all sorts of things. I remember I once had a goal shop, my, sorry, a goal a, a workshop on goal setting that mm -hmm. I hosted myself. We've had workshops on entrepreneurships. We've had workshops on study techniques. So that's when a gang mentor, volunteer, what, however you're part of the family, mm -hmm. stands up and says, "I've got something I want to teach the kids as a collective, not just an individual, which I have my mentee, but now I want to tell, teach the group something." Okay. So that's how we address the general problems. So there's a nice collective. Indeed sort of group work there. Mm. As well as we try and reward our mentors as well with workshops where mm. just they, something specific to a, a younger professional is on the cards and being taught, spoken about, sorry, that day. So we've had workshops without the kids there where, you know, young people like myself with lots of questions about the future, about their lives, about, because let's be honest, I'd not, you know, I could use some guidance too. I'm sure we all could. Yeah, okay. So we try and reward them in that way. But the most fun we have is when we take everyone and put them together and get them to go and do some community development. Sure. Because what happens in South Africa particularly is that these kids or people do well. They move on to from wherever to, say, say Santon, yeah. and they forget about where they come from and the people who are there. Yeah. So we try and teach these kids to go and look around in their area for potent opportunities, sorry, where we as a you know, I'd like to use the word army, but it's a bit violent. But if he has an army, <laughs> fill a bus, and we go and we go and paint. We go and feed people in a, you know in a home. We go and plant trees Arbor Day every year. So it's all about bringing love back. I know love has a mushy undertone, but it's true. We have lost that consideration for one another. You know? What what sets you apart from other NGOs, though? Because mm -hmm. um, a lot of NGOs, they've all got a wonderful mission statement. They're all giving back to the community. They're all empowering somebody. How is this different um, than, than any other NGO? Well, the ultimate goal, and this is what I repeat at every single session where I am given the opportunity, is that I will not be a gang volunteer for longer than, let's say, five years because it's time for the next youngster to take over. So we create mentors out of mentees. If you know what sure. I mean. So okay. we are constantly telling so these kids, um, we get them involved in recruitment, for example. Nice handover process. Indeed, yes. Longevity is created. Indeed. Because a lot of these kids see it and they 
I would like to say the word again, love it. And they also want to share it with other kids, you know. So we say, bring your friends, recruit people, help me recruit, help me market. You know, each of the exco ideally should have a assistant who is a kid who could learn, you know, what exactly does it take to be the program director? What exactly does it mean to be the head of marketing? What work is involved? Could I do this once, say, Candace steps down? You know. So mm -hmm. what, I, what I love about that to me is also it's creating then like a servant leadership, we call it, um, kind of mentality. Because it means a lot of people who, if you get opportunities, you know, it's just a um, handout. Hand mm -hmm. You just give, give, give. Whereas this I'm not is a fan like, of that. No, yeah. so, so I love what you're doing in that. Oh. You, you're encouraging and promoting that you've received and also give back. Indeed, yes. You know, contribute contribute back to your community. Sure. Well, look, I mean, uh, from a, on a personal level, that's why I got involved with Kathy. Mm. I think it's it's not about here we're begging for money or please give us clothes. I mean, those are, I mean, they all have their place, mm. but I find that NGOs that are turning to professionals to give up their time, the interactions are far more meaningful and that's really what drew me to this. Plus, it's also linked to the education, which, as I mentioned earlier, I think is, is in serious need within this country. And, I mean, I've got a stat here that, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's entirely accurate, but our unemployment rate is in excess of 25%, probably closer to 30. Yeah. So if you're able to get people to think for themselves from a much earlier age, I mean, Talani, you talk about running your own business, you never thought about it, but you were put in a position where it maybe was the best opportunity. Yeah. Not everyone takes that. Mm. Mm. How do you give people the tools to do that? I mean, And the mindset. The mindset you know what I mean? Because I just had the thing, well, I, let me try. You know, Indeed. I can. Yeah. If, you know, just sort of give it a go. And I guess when you, you talk of mindset, you speak on certain maybe types of upbringing. I mean, I was privileged enough to go to a private school, and they kind of encourage your own form of thinking, <laughs> rightly or wrongly. <laughs> um, but, but you develop that. Uh, whereas other, uh, not as privileged schools, don't maybe get that opportunity don't there. It. And I call it a reference point. It's like, so, so, so our education and our upbringing is one of the key ways we are conditioned, you know, and we develop what we call reference points. If you have, uh, um, have seen in your environment someone who can do, you know, who has done something, then you think it's possible. Yes. But if no one in your environment has ever done anything out of the norm, then what's in your environment, you don't know that there's something else. So, so what's really sad is what's on the, on the impoverished areas, all they see in the environment is starving people and abuse and, and things like that. They don't have another reference point. Yeah. So if you can give some of those children in those communities another reference point and show them there is another way, it then opens more possibilities and it can get people to start questioning. So in a more positive light, I mean, it, it, that's I think what you're doing is you, you're exposing youth to to people who have succeeded mm -hmm. so giving them you know the, the chance to say there is another way indeed i mean you just gave the example earlier of um the workshop you had this yes. weekend with, with one of the success the seminar part yes. yeah the yeah. participants came to us and said and i believe that i have a, i can be I, someone yes yeah. i feel like that's the big thing like you mentioned um i get to see the results quickly because for example i mentioned that some of the kids are assisting me as in my um, role within the organization. And just to see the growth in that one individual, it's, it's amazing because before that, they walked in a timid little child who maybe might just dance. You know, just that's all they'll do. Mm -hmm. But now they're doing speeches, they're speaking, to, having interviewing headmasters, they're talking to teachers, they're running around with clipboards, you know what I mean? Because you gave them the reference point that, that there is potential within them and there is, you know, opportunity. Mm. They just have to... I like that reference point. It. Indeed. It's, I'm going to steal it. It's one of the most um, critical <laughs> things in, in okay. our Criminity. development. <laughs> Sorry, say that last part again? I think it's, it's one of the most critical things in our development. So yeah. when you understand how, you know, how we filter information in relation to our reference points that we've been exposed through, through education, through our culture that we've grown up, the country we've grown up, you know, what happened in the economy, the media, the books you're exposed to, the people, you know, all of those things. It's your entire upbringing. Your entire upbringing. So that's why education is so important because it exposes you to so many more reference points. Okay. Books, just reading books. When you get to read someone else's adventure around the world, mm. you get exposed to a whole new set of reference points. Yeah. So, so that to me is, is, when you understand that, I don't know, things, things just change. You, you can't lose that reference point. <laughs> and, 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 and just bringing it back to the topic, so mentoring does that, mm -hmm. um, where, where as a youngster I can speak to my mentor. And, I mean, I've got my own mentors in the workplace. So, and you've, you've explained that coaching is not just a... I thought it was for only professionals, like once you hit the working place. It's, you've, you've already 
<laughs> cleared that uh, misconception of Shredder. Reference point is gone. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, um, but, but coaching is the same because you're almost giving that person the space. To become and, aware of their reference points. Yes, or, or either aware or develop new ones. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was going to say was the difference. So, so mentoring will expose you to, to a new, you know, other reference points and yeah. through the guidance, through mm -hmm. someone else's experience. Whereas coaching is, is not necessarily, but it's, it's a process to help you, act, you know, become aware of what reference points you're using and maybe help you challenge them and, as you say, develop new, more life-enhancing, more positive, useful okay. reference points. How do you measure the work that gang does, Arnie? You have these workshops, mm -hmm. um, you have a 12-month mentoring program. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Where, what's the barometer, the acid test for you? I think it's, a, you know, it's one of those things that's not very quantitative or even qualitative. You just look at the person and you remember the, the person that came in. And obviously, like, we give them some tasks. Like, often they're the ones who suggest workshops. They're the ones who report back to the these group. Are, these are the learners. Yes, these yeah. are the high school kids, yes. So we... we you know, you see it almost. I mean, we do try and get s sort of feedback from mentor and mentee, but that's very subjective. You know, if sure. there's a personal problem between or whatever, it could skew the results somewhat. But, you know, as myself and my head of mentoring, we kind of watch over every mentoring pair and we interview them once a year, in halfway, well, not halfway because that's all at the same time, but try and do it all about halfway through the year. And then we, you know, we discuss it amongst ourselves, we discuss it with them. We, we want to interview the kid alone, the mentor alone, and then together. And then you get a good sense of what's working and what's not. As well as, you know, the only quantitative way of measuring it is their academic record, I think. And, and in terms of the mentoring process, who do you put the onus on in order mm -hmm. to not necessarily a achieve a set goal? Mm -hmm. but, but I know communication would work two ways in this instance. But mm -hmm. yeah, how, how, how is the mentee able to benefit maximum? Proactivity, I think. Yeah. We encourage proactivity. Just the other day, I had a slide on the wall, oh, sorry, Saturday, and I was said to them, yes, it's up to you. You must make contact with, if the mentor goes quiet, email him, phone him. This person has offered their assistance. They might be busy at a time, but they will get back to you. So please don't take, you know, silence as a rejection because mm -hmm. this person has obviously signed up for a, a, a year-long relationship with you. So, yeah. And even in the, the more formalized, oh, I don't know that yours isn't formal, but I'm saying that professional mentoring, um, the onus is, has always been encouraged to be on the, the mentee. Okay. It's like your mentor, you know, it's like any, any professional, if you think about it, they're only as good as the questions you ask of them. Like your doctor is only able to help you diagnose whatever the problem is by how much information you, you, you volunteer give. and you give and the questions you ask and answer. So likewise with, with a mentor, if, if you want to get the most out of it, ask, engage, set up the meetings, work out what it is and maximize your time with that, that mentor by you know, coming up with what it is you want to ask them sure. up front so that when you get there, you got all your questions ready, you get the most out of it. All that and, time spent, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of mentors that are, are very proactive as well, I think, because they just love it and they, they want to, but there's nothing more disheartening than when you are as a mentor are trying to encourage someone and they're not participating, they're mm -hmm. not showing up, they're not asking questions, they're not engaging. Sure, and they don't follow the advice you give. I mean, that's another yeah. thing I said to them. You have to follow your mentor's advice. Try it out at least. And <laughs> sure, because yeah, it's that's not... True. I mean, you don't have to take their word as gospel though. But sure, but if you ask them a question and they say, you know, this is how I suggest you do it and you completely ignore that, then they're going to lose faith in you know, them as a mentor to you and you as someone who really wants to learn from them. Yeah. So it's quite, I think it's quite important. I stressed it again to them. Please, like okay. if your mentor tells you something, just try it. Like Talana said, yeah, give it a bash. So, I mean, that's quite a fundamental difference between them and coaching. Coaching, you're relying on providing the space to grow, but without guiding. Like you, yeah. That person almost is, as I mentioned earlier, thrown into the deep end, given the space to swim, but they need to take that opportunity to swim. Yeah. I, I use the analogy of, of a tour guide. Do you know what I mean? I'm, as a coach, I'm the tour guide. I can show you the door. You know, I can help you identify which door if there's a few of them. Yes. But I can't walk through the door for you. Sure. You have to actually do, do, do that. You have to get up and you know, do, do the walking through the door. So, so yeah, coaching is, is very much, um, maybe another way to just help differentiate is, is coaches, especially like from you know, the coaching I studied, I'm not too sure of other modality, you know, schools. There's a lot of schools of coaching. So meta coaching, 
we, we believe we study to become the experts in the structure of change. So we understand how those reference points work, how to create beliefs, how to change them, and how to help some move, someone move from where they are to where they want to be. But the actual content, the client, the coachee, is the expert in the, the content. Coaching. Indeed. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I can, as I say, I can hold the space and, and facilitate the structure of the process to help someone move from where they are to where they want to be. Yeah. But I can't want to do the work, and I don't know all the answers. I just know the questions to ask and, and which, which stage we are in in the process of change. And if we need to go back or forward and, you know, so I don't know if that, that helps. So, yes. Okay. The, the, where the mentee actually brings the content yeah. into and it. And then it's based on experience, as we mentioned earlier. I, I must say, in my life coaching um, sessions, I felt like I was being interviewed a lot of the time. You know, my coach would ask me a question, and hmm, answer. Another question, hmm, answer. Another question. That would go on for an hour. <laughs> but then I would skip home, you know, for some reason, because I just realized something that was hidden within me. Mm. Not even hidden, I've just never admitted it to myself. Yeah. You know, because I've been told that this is what you're going to do with your life. There's a level of self-awareness I think that comes from yes. being with yeah. the coach. Indeed. Even like a Very psychologist or therapist in all cases. As well, yeah. yes. Okay, um, we're nearing the end of a show, but we've still got a few minutes left. The, the Where Gang is now, Molly? Yes, sir. From my understanding, you were with two schools. Uh, we're with one school. One school at the moment. But this weekend we invited learners from another school in the area, actually. So we are opening applications to the learners from that school. So how do you plan on balancing growth with the demand that is, I think, dire in this country Indeed. from an education perspective? I mean, I know we're starting small. It's mm. not, uh, mm. And you don't want to grow too fast or have too big plans, but... I mean, it's I would love nothing more. I mean, if you look at the name, it's not guiding South Africa's next generation. You know, we're, we're, we're thinking about the whole continent. We want to create, it's, like, it's not even an organization. It's a movement. It's just realize that there are people behind you. You're not alone in this world. Yeah. And just put, extend a hand, pick somebody up. It's a couple of conversations, a couple of cups of coffee. It might be a trip to a football match, but you're changing someone's life story, you, and you're changing their family's life story. And that knock-on effect can do wonderful things for a continent like ours. Because we were just discussing African leaders, how they, it's all about the people until they get into power, and then it's about themselves. Yeah. And that's the sad thing. Yeah. Pe yeah. We forget it once we get there. We chase it, we get it, forget everyone else. Let's change, I'll try to change that. All right, so it's really, a gang is a call to action. Indeed, For yeah. any citizen Indeed. of Africa. You know, and, and gang itself, although its main thing is mentorship, we also offer an infrastructure, almost like an incubator, for other people to do their own community projects. For example, this weekend, a, a young lady by the name of Beverly Liza Gang, who is a fashion lecturer at the London International School of Fashion, which I think is the premier school of fashion in the country, has offered to run a nine-month course to teach young girls how to speak, you know, the fashion industry, wow. so that at the end of it, if they are, if there's a talent that's hidden, it's unearthed, if, if they are interested in pursuing something in fashion, they will actually have a portfolio that they would have walked, worked over over nine months to show potential funders. Wow and do something with that. So, I mean, I welcome anyone who wants to do anything because, like you said, the need is dire and there's only 24 hours a day. We're only in one area. We're only, you know, 50 strong. So we can do only so much. Another question that I have just before we close is how are you using social media in all of this? Because you look at social media now, mm. Facebook, Twitter, kids have smartphones. We all have smartphones effectively or access to to them, mm -hmm. how are you using that as not just the, hey guys, we're meeting on a Saturday and we're doing X, Y, and Z, how are you empowering like, well, messaging? Well, sure, um, we keep our messages very general and very, you know, it's for everyone. Characters. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I mean, we try and motivate even people that aren't, you know, in the gang. For example, there's this young lady in Hungary, actually, and I tell the story too many times, but she's been following us on Facebook and she send, sends me an email once a week and tells me about a week. So I feel like I'm kind of mentoring her because her dream is to like start an NGO that either is based in Hungary and takes care of a Hungarian need or she comes to South Africa and does something that South Africa needs. So like through social media, we've been able to unlock that. She sees who we are, the kind of conversations we have, the mm -hmm. status updates, the tweets, mm -hmm. the videos we upload, the, the photos. You know, it's, it's a wonderful tool and I encourage mm -hmm. every, and it's free. <laughs> yeah, it's that's also a big bonus. Free. I mean, wow, it's it's so very effectively. Okay. Great marketing team, and um, it's basically our only way of getting of uh, reaching 
a wider audience or any sort of audience. And Talana, from a social media perspective for you, have you had any international dealings just based <laughs> on that alone? Um, yeah, I, I do have some international clients. Um, I don't know if it was necessary through it. Sometimes I find it difficult to, to measure through social media. So, so I use social media just to share useful information and and just articles like marketing and, yourself and, and just and just let people know about my speciality and, and, and coaching's focus. Okay. Um, so yeah, so spreading a lot, a lot of that, but I, I find technology very useful for coaching because coaching is a, a conversation. So and then the most powerful, I think, is face to face mm. because of technology. I do have clients overseas because we can Skype. Yeah. Mm. And I've actually hired coaches overseas because of their speciality, mm. and yeah, we've done the coaching over the phone. It's a very small world nowadays. It, it is. It, it is. is. And technology just allows us to do these wonderful things. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. So so in closing, Talana, what's what's next for you in terms of inner coaching? Um, yeah, exciting stuff. We're going to launch some some courses. i um, doing a, a lot around self-esteem for women. And, and I think it's one of the actually myths I want to bust. I believe one of the reference points that we have developed around self-esteem is, is, is actually a big myth. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, so, yeah, so and just some, some interesting collective coaching, I call it. So coaching that, that's half group format, half individual which makes it a lot more accessible to people and people then getting the, the benefits of learning from, from others. Okay, and how can people get in touch with you? Um, best way is through the website, innercoaching.co.za. Okay, all right, great. And then Molly, as we close, mm -hmm. what's, uh, how can volunteers get involved with GANG? Well, the best thing to do would be, as Talana said, well, f this is my website. Uh, it is www.gang.org.za, okay. as well as just send an e email to info at gang.org.za. That's probably a lot quicker because going to the website, you'll I eventually end up clicking a link you'll that will do well. that <laughs> anyway. All right, so, so gang.org.za or that's info correct. at gang.org.za. Yes. Correct. All right, great. So thanks very much for, for joining us. Share your views with us on Twitter, at LT Possibility. You can join us on our Facebook page, and let's keep the conversation going. If you have mm. any suggestions, comments, opinions, love for you to share them with us. And uh, next week's to topic, uh, my, our colleague Mongezi Tati is going to be looking at active citizenry, which I think is... Um, I think takes can take a leaf out of uh, of Mali's book, yes, definitely in starting <laughs> gang. So that's I think there joins on... A, there's a nice link, link there, right there. Indeed. But until then, for myself, Jonathan, and all of us at Let's Talk Possibility, have a great week, and uh, go find the possibilities. <laughs>